I would argue that, um, yeah, everybody has parts of their memory that aren't as good as they want, but also other forms of memory that they're very good at. So I would guess, I've only just met you today, that your memory for stories and storytelling and story progress is excellent because it has to be for the job that you do. I bet you it's much better than your friend that can navigate back. Not everybody has a perfect memory in all the different dimensions. And, and it's like our personality. Some people have a wonderful sense of humor and others don't. Um, it is about how our brains are wired, which is defined both by nature and nurture, our genes. And, you know, if I, if I went to a uh, stand-up comedy class, I would probably get funnier. But, um, uh, but there's probably a limit to my funniness compared to other people. So there's different types of memory. Yes. In your book, you talk about there being, I think, is it three different types of memory in total so that are formed in the hippocampus? Uh, there's lots of different names for forms of memory in the hippocampus, um, but I like to describe it as the hippocampus is critical for our memory for facts and, and events, um, also called declarative memory or cognitive memory. Uh, another form of memory that's dependent on a completely different structure is motor memory, the memory that you uh, use to learn how to play tennis or pickleball or whatever you're playing. And it's not declarative. I can't declare how I do a backhand in, in, in tennis, but it is in your motor functions. And, and this is dependent on the striatum, and a, a motor related structure. And then there's the prefrontal cortex dependent on that working memory or scratch pad memory, keeping things in mind. So um, you and I are tr both trying to remember what we've just said so we can, we can link it to things that we might say in the future.